going to graph this. All right. So we've all got our little graph paper. I'm going to put mine down there. Okay. Now let's make note. This is for vertex form. That's the equation, the form the equation is in. And we like vertex form, right? Because that means I can find the vertex in two seconds, right? We do opposite left or right with this number. And we do same up or down with this one. Remember, we, that's how our transformations of our functions went. We all remember this, right? Because this is pretty easy. So since it says negative 1, I'm going to go to the right one. And then I'm going to go up 3. One, two, three. And then that's my vertex. So that shifting goes really, really fast. We shift the number on the inside is opposite left or right. So that's why I chose to go to the right one and then up three. If I wanted then to identify the vertex, I could. Let's do move this over just a little bit here. So that means my vertex is sitting at one, three. And Megan has come to join us. All right, now from there, what we're going to do is we're going to learn the shortcut. Okay, so there are three magic numbers that we're going to use for our shortcut. And it's the same three magic numbers every time. We're going to use one, three, five. And if I wanted, I could keep going. If my graph paper was big enough, I could use seven, nine, eleven. One, three, five is going to work. Okay. Now, I'm going to take the leading coefficient and I'm going to multiply it by each one of these, okay? So that negative 2 is going to come down here and I'm going to go times negative 2, times negative 2, times negative 2. Okay, so the math's going to be simple. Now, obviously, I am doing this and showing all the work which is making it not such a shortcut. Eventually, you'll get to the place where you'll be able to do this in your head. Okay. <clears throat> now, I got a bunch of negative numbers here. All right. That's because this was a negative number. With this leading coefficient being a negative, what did that tell me about my parabola? Yeah, it's going to be going down. It's going to be an upside down one. All right. And that's good. These are negative numbers. Now, this next part for the, sh the shortcut graphing, you really need to watch my pencil as I talk here. Okay. So I'm going to, I know it's an upside down parabola. So I'm going to start at my vertex. I am always going to move either right or left. I'm going to go to the right and do all the right points first. I'm going to go to the right one. Notice I don't move my pencil. And then I'm going to go down two, one, two, and put a point. Then I'm going to keep my pencil right there. I'm going to go to the right one and then down six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, now, if my graph paper was big enough, I could go to the right one and down 10. But I don't really need that point, right? Because I've got enough on there. I know what my parabola is looking like. All right, do I need to go through that again? I start at my vertex. I went to the right one and then down two because that was my magic numbers that I created over here. I go to the right one. And then I went down 6, and then I don't have to do the 10 because I'm off my graph paper. Good so far? Now, we know that parabolas are symmetrical. So then I can just put a bunch of points on the left, too. I can go 1 to the left and down 2, and that point's going to be symmetrical to here. And I'm going to go 1 to the left and then down 6, and that point will be symmetrically across from this one. And then this is an exactly precisely graphed parabola. So I can connect them. All right, and then like I said, it took a long time or it took longer than it should have because I was talking and explaining it. Once you get really good at this, you're going to be able to graph these really, really, really fast. That is the exact width. So when we were sketching before, we didn't have that width right. But now we can do this really quick and have the exact width, the exact spot it's supposed to be. Okay, so is that pretty simple? Did you do this with Mrs. Anquinetti? So she did get this covered, so that's good. All right, now, can I add an axis of symmetry? Can I add the axis of symmetry? We always remember what that one is. That's the, and notice that's the dotted line. So axis of symmetry. And then if I had to write that equation, it's an up and down line, right? So it's going to be x equals 
1 because it's going through 1. So my axis of symmetry is x equals 1. So whatever that vertex is, actually it matches this number right here in my vertex. The axis of symmetry does. All right, and then just to review a bunch of stuff that we have done in the past, we've done domain, right? So we ought to be able to find the domain. It's a polynomial curve, goes on forever and ever in both directions, no holes, no jumps, no gaps, so that means my domain has to be You all are trying to catch up right. So my domain, there's no holes, there's no gaps. It's a polynomial curve. goes on forever and ever in both directions. Negative infinity to positive infinity. When I get going fast, you just got to yell at me, slow down. All right, now our range, the range changes for every one of these because if you remember the range, the range is where the graph goes along the y-axis. And we always have to start at the bottom of the graph and work our way up and find out all the y values that are included in our range. So this parabola goes on forever and ever and ever in this direction. So what's my y value going down? Negative infinity. All right, so do I need square or curvy brackets on my negative infinity? Curvy, always curvy. All right, now this parabola goes up to here, that's the highest point, what y value is that at? 3. y value of 3. Now, is it a closed dot or an open dot? Is the dot included on the graph? It's included, solid dot, so square bracket. All right, now, this lesson, we're just going to be focusing on doing the graph, looking at the graph, finding all these pieces and parts. It still would be, yes. I don't have to have that dot there, it, there but because it's included because there's no hole there. Okay. Yeah, so normally, I mean, although we do plot that vertex, all right, even though I didn't, if I don't specifically, see, I can make the dot disappear. <laughs> yeah, but it's still going to be 3 and still going to be square. Yep. All right, now, looking at the graph and looking at some other things that we have done, all right, haven't we done x-intercepts? and y-intercepts. Okay, now the y-intercept, which is right there, that's easy because it really crosses that. I can identify that point. So just looking at the graph, I can say, oh, my y-intercept is 0, 1. Okay, and that's good. Now, as for my x-intercepts, all right, those are not so easy, right? So here's an x-intercept, and here's an x-intercept. Those are x-intercepts. I have two of them. All right. Now, just looking at the graph, I can't tell you what they are, right? Because they don't cross at an even point. I'd have to estimate them, and I don't want to estimate them. All right. In the previous chapter, though, didn't we find x and y-intercepts algebraically? So you could find them. So let's just put um, could find algebraically because we've already done it in a previous chapter this chapter algebraically this chapter is not wanting you to do that they're wanting you just to take pieces of information from your graph that can easily be identified all right